Hey everyone, I am Cool Guy, and today we're going to be talking about being prepared for 1.1.2 patch and Destiny's next expansion, The House of Wolves. Now, I'm going to have a task for you guys at the end. It's very daunting. It's going to be a true grind. Very hard to do, but totally worth it. I have a good feeling. And the expansion is expected to come out in quarter two of this year. We don't have an exact date yet. The previous rumor was March 19th. Regardless of whenever it drops, this video, its sole purpose is to help us be prepared for it. So we're going to be going over a little bit of a review of the Dark Below. Then I'm going to give some suggestions of what I'm doing now currently. And it's going to help us out on the release date. Now, in the background, we're using the Universal Remote, Longbow Sniper Rifle. Very high build on Intellect for this Warlock. It's paired with Siphon abilities, going to the Noble Bomb, as well as the Obsidian Mine Helmet. I mean, I really do. I love this build. Very fun game. I believe I went 21-1 and with the Sum of All Tears, maybe? It's a pretty good gameplay, but like I said, before we start talking about the House of Wolves and 1.1.2, let's talk a little bit about what happened in the Dark Below. They made a lot of changes with that expansion, right? A lot of drastic changes, and with that, I mean, you're hearing developers, you kind of feel like mistakes were made, which they did. I mean, they were making players fully start from scratch to relevel their weapons that they upgraded from Zerg to get them to 331, having vendors sell 31 gear out of the gate, and making the raid gear that you just got from the Vault of Glass, it's completely useless. So. Then they added exotic shards, added commendations, added radiant materials, and those radiant materials are going to be here to stay, guys. At least I think so. It's it, they're designed for raid gear specifically. So when the House of Wolves comes out, when we start getting raid gear for uh, raid gear for it, it seems logical that radiant materials are going to be here to stay. So with the upcoming expansion, I do believe it's taking a little bit longer, so they can kind of right their wrongs, if you will, because they introduced a formula in the Dark Below, and now they kind of have to revert and change some things, but. Planet Destiny had a great video about the Reef and then how it's going to be kind of a player hub, kind of like a Tower 2. And then Bungie's teasing about more Vault Space, which that's nice. I mean, I had, I was creating my own Vault Space. I would go into Night Falls and Iron Banner and I would have all of my uh, primary, I mean everything, have 12 in there so nothing could be fit. So then my Postmaster would pick up the slack. So like my Postmaster, my Hunter, has like 12 legendary weapons, couple exotics. That's what I was doing to kind of bypass it, but it's going to be nice. And with the new Queen's Hub, that Planet Destiny covered, I mean, that also looks why, like, Queen's Wrath never returned to the tower, because, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get involved with the Queen. I was moving across the country when she came, and I'll see posts like, you're not a true veteran unless, you know, you have Queen's gear, and I just kind of look down on my keyboard, I'm like, ugh, I, can, I guess not, but, <laughs> but, which I know, I mean, can you guys believe it's been five months since that Queen's Wrath came? That's unbelievable, but, it appears it's not going to be coming back to the tower because we're going to the Queen, and if the Wrath does return, it's going to be right before the expansion, that's only just to get us pumped, which, you know, I'm okay with that, no problems. But here are some steps I'm taking to prepare for the House of Wolves and the 1.1.2. I've come up with a plan I want to share with you guys, my subscribers, to get the most out of that day. And a lot of this is going to be put in effect way later on down the line. I want to revert you guys back to this video once we get a more solid date. But why am I starting now? And it's, if it's one thing that we've learned, bungee those curveballs, man. And I want you guys to have options. So who knows? Changes are going to come in 1.1.2. Changes are going to come in the House of Wolves. But... First things up, it's to get the guns that you guys want from the vendors now. Use these couple of weeks this month to get those guns, and that's why I'm doing it so early. It's very important that you get these weapons, because what we learned from the last update is guns disappear. They just disappear from the Vanguard and Crucible Quartermasters. A ton of players were upset. I mean, so many people wanted that Shadow Price. They wanted that Zombie Apocalypse, and it's gone. And like myself, I loved Lord Hyfexer from the Crucible Quartermaster. It was one of my favorite hand cannons. The game moved on. I kind of felt like 300 damage wouldn't be enough. I mean, we're going to 331. I mean, a lot of us didn't know any better. And I got other hand cannons to essentially replace it, and I ended up dismantling it along with a packed vault space. I almost had to, right? But to this day, at least twice a week, I think about that hand cannon and how good it was and how rare it is now. Because it can only be obtained from an Ingram or a rank up, and the odds are astronomical. So don't be that guy. Get the guns that you want and hold on to them. It may not end at the Vanguard and Crucible Quartermaster. Maybe Bungie changes the inventory for the factions as well. So let's say Vanquisher gets dropped and the Red Hand gets added for the new monarchy or the Unwilling Soul for the Venation and Dead Orbit. Keep those kinds of things in mind as a possibility as well. And no particular order, and by no means am I saying you must get this weapon, but things like the Saturn Rapier with Outlaw and Firefly, one of the best perk marriages in Destiny, really good. I really like the Beeline Trauma, Secret Handshake, things like that. Three little words. So. Also, if you haven't already, start thinking about your character build. Sometimes you're going to get a piece of gear and you're going to dismantle it because it has strength. And you don't like strength, so it's dead to you. Just gone. Or you have, a, like, raid gear. Or it doesn't have to be raid gear. And you get boots, and you'll immediately dismantle them because you already have high-level boots. Just don't do that anymore. Pay attention. Only dismantle if stats aren't as good as the ones that you're wearing. And keep the different attributes. They come in handy. Obviously, high-end content like Raids and Nightfalls, the only thing that matters. 32 is the only thing that matters. But for everything else, you can make some really fun builds. But things like your everyday patrol, bounties, rock strikes, 
you can make some really fun builds, and especially PvP. Light level doesn't matter. You can really focus on that intellect, strength, discipline, and really complement how you want to run your Guardian, and things like fast reloads for auto rifles and hand cannons. So be on the lookout, like my Warlock, Hardopraxic Fire, one of the most coveted pieces for the Warlock. Speeds up cooldowns of all your abilities while in Radiance. Now this stacks with Discipline, so we all know he, he has some grenade span. So I'll run 100% Discipline with that build, and I'm still deciding if I want to do Intellect or Strength as a second attribute, but again, I just, so I just got Radiance, and with no extra time, I have about 20% Discipline, I throw about 5 grenades. So with Discipline max at 100%, I throw about 8 or 9. Then you add on the Extended Radiance with 100 Discipline, you throw upwards of 11 or 12. So it's a big difference. And with the Blade Dancer Hunter, one of my favorite, I don't know, I'll show it to you guys here in a You're second. In it's lead. my Heart in the Paint class, up in your face. I utilize Blink and Shotgun, so I focus on Intellect and Strength. Strength is the cooldown of your, your Blink Strike, and Intellect is to get your Super a little bit more often. So Fast Twitch and Hungering Blade I use with Strength. So every time I stab someone, I get Blink Strike back, like within seconds, and then I get my health back. And I do have to counter that I have zero discipline, so I, I spawn with Lucky Raspberry. So I spawn with Arc Bolt, and it chains further. So you can do some pretty cool things. It's one of the, one of my favorite parts of the game. If you guys haven't, please do. So you've gotten those weapons that you don't want to miss out on, right? And you've been getting those power builds going with intellect, strength, discipline. Here's what you need to do to have an awesome House of Wolves launch day. And right before the release, there's a couple things you need to get done. And this is that challenge I had, you guys. And if you don't do it, you're considered casual. Like playing it, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> I'm assuming that you have three characters. Number one, a couple days right before the release for each of your characters have all the marks for Vanguard and Crucible at 200. This guarantees you new weapons or gear to buy from the Quartermaster, so you can have three brand new Crucible weapons, three brand new Vanguard weapons, all with the upgraded damage. I'm not sure what it's going to be, but it's going to be higher. Number two, just like we talked about with that Power Bounty video, have ten full bounties ready to go on each of your Guardians, so 30 total to add experience to the weapons or gear. And those two are done like a day, right, day or two right before the update. Now the update comes, you install it, Number three is to get yourself Postmaster packages. So have your Vanguard and Crucible rank Rumble. right at rank up, about two, three hundred experience away. Use a bounty or two to rank up the Vanguard and Crucible to get yourself a package. And now, we're not stopping the there. This is, is the hard everywhere. part. This is what makes you become Legend. Not only are we going to get those packages, but another reason why I'm doing this video so early is we're going to get all the faction packages for all of our characters. So starting now, this is a great week because of Iron Banner. Work on getting your faction, if you haven't touched it, right to rank up, meaning level 3. So, most of you have picked a faction. I have Dead Orbit, like, at 30, right? I've never touched Future War Cold. Get it right to where you're about to rank up. Switch to a new one. If you've never ranked up that faction, get it to at least 3. So, the goal is for each of your three characters to be right at a package for everything, right? So, here's the final outcome. You install the House of Wolves. You have full bounties. You have full marks. You switch out your mark or bond. So... You're going to put a bounty on Vanguard, put a bounty on Crucible, New Monarchy, Dead Orbit, Future War Cult. So each character is going to have five packages from the Postmaster. And in them, you're going to get cool new weapons with rare rolls, or you might get new gear. And check the vendors first if they're selling high-level gear, meaning level 30, um, 33 gear. So just like Bungie did last time, I, I'm not sure. Like I don't think Bungie is going to change the vendor gear. Because last time they gave you 31 armor, and the vault gear became immediately obsolete. All that work you did in the raid, nothing. So I have no idea how they're changing it, but I think that they are. So in the rare case, that they keep it the same, from these packages, you're looking for one piece of armor. So say the Dead Orbit package gives you level 33 gauntlets. So use your marks from the Vanguard to buy a chest. Use your marks from the Crucible to buy legs. That way, you're level 33 in like five minutes. Don't even mess around with it. So if the gear stays the same, same light level, that's still okay. Maybe you can get some cool weapons and you can get them with the upgraded damage. So the end result, 15 Postmaster packages that can give you all new items. You're guaranteeing yourself six new weapons with your marks, so one from the Vanguard, one from the Crucible, and you could very well have 10 or more upgraded weapons, or upgraded damage weapons on day one. Then you use those bounties to level up a little bit quicker. Thank you guys so much for watching. Cool links in the description. I'm going to leave you guys with this gameplay. I get robbed at the end. Almost a perfect game. And until next time, I am Cool Guy.
Heavy ammo on the way. Heavy ammo available. This isn't a fight, it's a massacre! You can fight by my side any time, Guardian. <laughs> 